Holy Tuesday. Today, Jesus challenges the teachings of the religious elites on various issues, praises the offering of a widow, and opens his teachings to God-fearing Greeks. And many believe, believe that this is the evening that Jesus delivered the Olivet Discourse, his last major sermon, which can be found in Matthew 24 through 25, Mark 13, and Luke 21, 5 through 36. Let us walk with Jesus this Passion Week. Let us imagine the stories and gaze upon the landscape in perspectives we may not have considered. Let us understand the richness of God's great love and passion for those he holds precious. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 1 through 7 Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength on nothing and vanity, yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is, too, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred, by, na by the nation, of the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because the Lord who is faithful, the one, Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you.
Psalm 71, verses 1 through 14. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may continually come. You have given the commandment to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust. O Lord, from your, from my, my youth, upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been as a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch my life consult to death together and say God has forsaken him pursue and seize him for there is none to deliver him O God be not far from me O my God make haste to help me may my accusers be put to shame and consumed with scorn and disgrace may they be covered who seek my hurt but I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18-31 through 31. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in wisdom, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preached. To save those who believe. For Jews demanded, demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. 
But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God, and because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Query. God chose the foolish according to the worldly standards to do great things. When we sense the call of Christ, do we rely on the wisdom of the world to proceed? How can we embrace God more fully and trust him at his word? John chapter 12, verses 20 through 36. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of the, this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted from this earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show what kind of death he was go going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed 
and hid his, himself from them. Query. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. Darkness surrounds us from all sides. It comes in many forms, even in forms that seem good. In what ways are you recognizing and in overcoming the distractions in life that seem to pull us away from God? Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restored all things in, in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is, still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, 
the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace. To the glory of your name. Amen.